Welcome everybody to this episode of Keladagia Live. I'm Jason, the creator of the Keladagia Universe, and tonight we're continuing our series of designing the new Paragon miniature for Legends of Keladagia Heroes of the Air Ghoul. And you can see down here in the corner, oh, wrong corner, this corner. I think I know where that is by now, but apparently I don't. Maybe it's a different camera, I don't know. I'm going to blame it on that. But <laughs> down there by Keladagia.com forward slash live, which of course has, you know what I don't have in front of me? The miniatures you can buy at Caladagia.com forward slash live. I should go correct that really quickly. But what I'm pointing to down there is not the URL, but the little image hiding down there in the corner. And that is the thing, the artwork I've been working on last time. And this time here for the second episode, I can continue the concept art for the Peregrine miniature, which is a Corvette class warship. It's one of the smaller warships in the Caladagia universe. But this time, now that I've got the basic concept of what I want to get for the overall look of the thing, here is another shot of the image you're looking at the corner there, I'm going to start filling in the details around the side, the bottom, front, and back. So let me grab a few miniatures for reference, and then we'll go ahead and dive deeper into this process of the concept art for the, for the Air Ghoul Peregrine. And I think I actually got to run to my bedroom to grab those said miniatures. So I will be back in just a moment. One of the stories have more than five minutes of proper show and you won't strip things like this. Alright, let's see, here's a hammerhead. And I have the main wolf that I had out last time. We we'll use that one as well. Alright, cool. Um, I don't know where the original. I had a token also sitting here last time for the original Saber from the first edition game. I don't know where that went to, but I don't think I need it at this point. I've kind of got in my head what I'm working with. So let me set my miniatures off to the side here. Push that out of the way of the camera a little bit. And what I'm going to start off first with is drawing the front of the ship. So I'm kind of setting the Let's go like this. I'm going to, so I'm setting the paper up along the side here so it's, it's kind of pointing downward because I'm going to be drawn approximately the front of the ship here to get an idea of what's overall shape is. Now last time I talked a lot about approaching functionality of a spacecraft. Of course you know it's a mixture of how an actual spacecraft might work but also factoring the fact this is a science fiction universe and therefore there's a lot of made up stuff going on. But despite being made up stuff, there are certain rules about how things work you want to get consistent. And the third thing, of course, is figuring how are you going to cast this thing. Once again, I've got a couple of resin molds sitting here. So from the very beginning, you have to think about how you're going to cast a miniature in terms of lay it out in the rubber mold, decide where air bubbles can occur and things like that, and factor that into the design. And that's going to become especially true here with when you start looking from different directions. In particular, like all my miniatures, it's going to be done with a two-part mold like you see here. And the way it's going to be sitting in the mold, so right, for example, this mold here is a piece from the new Lynx Battle Cruiser, which, whoops, don't bump the camera, Jason. Let me fix that. The new Lynx Battle Cruiser, which, you know, what I can do is also grab that from the miniature's case and show that guy off. So this piece, uh, this mold I've got here is from this miniature right here. It's the back bridge command section, these three orange things, engine coolings, all that kind of stuff. And it's sitting the way it'd be sitting if I were to actually be filling it with resin. Of course, I'm not doing that, but you know. And because of the fact that a mold comes apart in two pieces, it has to be pulled apart in such a way that the two pieces can come apart without grabbing on and kind of getting stuck on pieces of the miniature. There's a concept called undercutting. I'll explain it a little bit more as we go along with, okay, I gotta stop kicking the camera. Hey, actually, it's a better position now. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys, but I kicked it into a better position. But anyway, you have to consider that when you pull the mold apart, there's something called undercutting, where if the mold rubber gets underneath a piece of the miniature and try to pull it apart, it's gonna very easily damage the this, the mold here, and you won't be able to use the mold again. And ideally, you wanna make hundreds and not thousands out of this mold. This, this Moldstar 16, Moldstar 16, 
fast is what this is. Apparently, I've been told they can do that many castings. It's pretty intense what the guys, the sales guys are telling me, but they are sales guys. But they seem to really enjoy resin, so maybe they actually know what this stuff does. And we'll find out someday when I make that many casts out of that particular mold there. It seems that my monitor is screwed up again. One moment here, let me refresh a few things. All right, so let me get this thing set up. And what I'm thinking for the front of the ship, the original one has a little had a little bit of a curve, kind of like a point to it, to where it kind of peaked in the middle. And I'm gonna kind of keep that as well. So I think we'd be seeing, let's just, we'll pretend like right here is kind of the, you're looking dead on. So here would be, this is going to be the front, I'm going to say, yes, yeah, so this would be like the front canopy area. And we can kind of see that it would broaden out to about here. And I think what, what I would do is, let's see, so I have a, a more or less, maybe just a very small, um, kind of like, probably would have a very small kind of flat piece here at the nose. And then I want to maybe bring it out a little bit like this. So the bottom, Kind of would the bottom of the canopy area would go down a little bit below the front, and of course then the top would also go up. So maybe the the top of the warship it might be like that tall approximately. I'm kind of I'm still when I'm going approaching from the different directions. I'm still also thinking in terms of I'm not thinking in terms of I'm, I'm still just kind of sketching ideas. This may not necessarily be the final concept art. Just like how with this piece up here. I had several different revisions to it. I'm doing the same thing right now. I'm kind of just getting some basic ideas down because there is a bit of a wing structure going on here. And what I'm thinking it will be is the bottom, so if I bring this piece back down here, wherever the lowest elevation point of the top of this wing is, is gonna be the middle of the mold. So therefore, anything of this, therefore, the way the two-part mold will work, if I make that the fixed hard rule, then I will know that I can pull this mold apart and have all the pieces and have it come apart without getting stuck on things. It's a weird, it's not the easiest thing to visualize if you're not terribly familiar with resin casting, but that is how I'm thinking about it, because it's just something that I've gained through experience with resin casting. Now we know the wing, the wing part sticks out to here or so, and there is a, a quote, a bit of a wing. So let's say the bottom of the wing would be something like this. So somewhere around here is the bottom of the wing it's sticking out like that. And then let's see, so the canopy, now there's actually a canopy to this thing, which maybe would stick up sort of like this. And we know maybe, let's see, so the canopy is probably gonna be something like that. So there's a little bit of a canopy sticking out of the front of the, sticking out of the top of the front of this, I don't know what I call it, of the, I guess, cockpit area, because this is kind of like the, this would be the, sorry, nose of the warship, here's the canopy, there we go. And I'll probably make it so this, this ends up kind of diving down into that. So this back here, and there'll probably be a piece back here you can't quite see maybe from the side we'll extend this thing out a little bit and this goes back to zero. So there is, it is a little bit of a bubble canopy shape to it. I think is what I'll probably end up doing. So this is like there. Okay, so that'll be a little bit of bubble canopy. Here and in the back, it's gonna have the same elevation as the rest of the nose cone area. And coming up, there's definitely some, we know there's some other elevation pieces. Like we had this marked as two and three. So there's a few more layers going on up here. There's a, there's a raised piece behind the canopy that goes up a little bit, and then there's even a higher raised piece here that goes that starts here and goes up a little bit further back, and this goes back into a wing section. So I'm kind of just figuring out, okay, so it's this, and there's this other higher, even more raised piece. And then there's even another raised piece here that goes back and sits on top of this even more raised piece. So it's basically a, a staggered layer of armor panels kind of stacking up here that we're looking at at the moment. And that's, if I bring this guy back down, that's this piece, this piece, this piece, and this little piece up here. But in the end, it peaks with these armor bands. So there's a couple armor bands here. These are the highest peaks on the miniature. And I know those are gonna peak somewhere up here. So that's like that armor band. And then, 
So let's make the top of the wing, the wing quote, because this is a spacecraft. Whoops, dropping the pencil. It can't enter in the atmosphere. The wing is there primarily for utilitarian purpose to carry weapons, fuel, and other things. It just gives the ship more volume to carry stuff. So it's not actually like this ship can fly in the atmosphere at all. <sighs> my, my Chrome, I don't know, my, my Twitch monitor over here on my laptop is just keeps freezing up on me. So sorry about that. I keep having to get myself distracted rebooting it. So let's say then, so this is the top of the armor band. The, the wing has to have some thickness to it. Once again, for resin casting purposes, thin things snap. That's why you don't make spears, swords, things like that out of resin because they snap. Game companies do it, but it's a terrible, terrible idea. Same philosophy applies to thin wings. If wings are thin, they snap. So there's gotta be some thickness to this wing. And then therefore, so if I decided up here is the very top of the warship, this line that's gonna slant down here is gonna be one of these armor bands coming in. So this will be like, so this wing, so there's two parts of the wing. So at the top of the nose cone here has a part of the wing that slopes down to this, to this area. So from the top of the wing to the top of the nose cone has a connection. And that is, that's represented by this line right here on the top of the warship. Then we also have these armor bands. Now there's several armor bands going on that would be visible from the front. You have the big, the main ones, which are the ones drawn up here. Then you have one a little bit closer, which maybe only goes up to here. So we've really got about three different layers going from the front. So there's layer one. You have layer two, which is tough. This is gonna be tough to see. It's kind of going in there, also going down, and it's gonna go to a little bit above the wingtip. So there's a there's a line in here. I'll fill that in in a minute. And then there is this top of the of the armor band, and that goes down. But that meets at the same point where the first armor band meets. So I've got this three distinct lines in here. I'll darken them in in a minute to make them more visible. But these are the different levels of the armor band sticking up. And what I think I'm gonna do is let's make the bottom of the wing come to about here. So the bottom of the wing has a little bit of slope to it too, because that's gonna look cool. And then also by giving the wing a little bit of thickness, this is gonna let me adjust the position of the half of the mold. So if you think about it, let me draw a little box around here. That, so that would be one half of the mold would be that, and the other half of the mold would be up there. So somewhere in this thickness area of the wing, it's a, by giving a little bit of a thickness, it's a very practical way of kind of giving me a little bit of flexibility as to where the, um, where like, what I wanna say, where the front of brain failure, gives me a little bit of flexibility as to where the mold's gonna split into two. There we go, way to go Jason, way to go. Okay, now there's a few things you would see also visible from the front. You've got the two fire cannons here that are forward mounted. And then you've got the main engine. These engines back here are, I don't know, I, I'll think about it. They may be, you maybe see them down here. You may not, I haven't fully decided just quite yet. Let me see one thing. One thing I do have to consider is where, let's start with the two fire cans. So those are obviously visible in the front. Cause I don't, oh yeah, I'll start with the fire cans. I'll explain the rest later. Here's the bottom of the wing. The fire cannons, are going to be, they would have a circular, so they, they need to, we can build them into the wing a little bit, because they have they would have a circular barrel to them, and it looks like about half the wing is taken up by the fire cannons. So this, this area here is gonna be taken up by fire cannons. So let's do a circular barrel there, circular barrel there. So it's almost like two, bat two fire cannons right next to each other. Probably the ammunition magazines are in the wing to load them in. So you, have, you have actually some physical space to where the the, um, and the shells get loaded into the cannons. You can watch the trailer for Legends of Kaladaja Heroes of the Air Ghoul if you want to see that in action. Because you actually see that in the animation, it loads up. It has It's a shot of the fire cannons here of one of the frigates. So you see the, am, the shell get loaded in the barrel and then it kind of zooms out. It's a really cool shot. It's a cool, probably one of the coolest shots in the entire trailer. Which I actually, oh, I do have it loaded up, but that's all right. You don't need to watch that right now. Watch that when the show, when this episode's done. Okay, so here's the two barrels of the fire cannons, and they do have a rectangular case around them, for whatever reason, because that's how I designed them. So there's two rectangular cases, 
and it's just that. I think they're going to, the barrels will probably be more or less equal, which means not a whole lot. It's just that's what you're gonna that's what you're gonna see from the front. Yeah, that that works. So you have the two barrels of the fire cans with a little bit of extra stuff around them. And what I might do just to make it look kind of cool, let's make let's give this side a um a slanted wing. So I, I don't know a slanted out. So this line is really not going to be visible. It's going to be fading to this thing. But that's just to get a little bit of flair to it. And then we have the engine, the engine mount on the wing. Now the thing we have to think about is that the um. You can't just take a cylindrical object and jam it and attach it on to the bottom of a flat object. Hence right here with the fire cannons, even though they have a, the cylindrical shell, or this isn't really, yeah, that's sort of along these lines. But if you think about it, for example, let me just draw, sketch something out down here with some extra space. So you have a flat surface, right? You can't easily take a cylindrical thing and stick it on like this, because there isn't a whole lot of surface area in the flat surface to hold that cylindrical piece onto the miniature. So you need to wrap the cylindrical piece a little bit with other material so that it kind of it kind of sits in whatever the flat piece is or the rectangular piece. So the top of the engine is not going to be actually right here. It's going to be inset a little bit. Kind of like how we stylized the fire cannons, but this time it's for pure practical purposes in terms of attaching the engine to the wing. So let me go up here and then let's start up here. And I don't, I don't know how big the engine's gonna be, but the, the top of the engine will be there, bottom of the engine will be right around there. There's the middle, that looks good. So let me just draw in a circular engine. So this is where the, this is about the right size, I would say, approximately for well, hold on. If I bring this thing back down here, you can see if I were to trace the engine line across, it comes almost, that's uh, a little bit of a crappy slanted line there, but it comes almost up to where the fire cannon is. So the reality is, this, this needs to be a little bit bigger. So we really should be looking at something that's a little bit closer in size, but it needs to be, hmm. Okay, whatever, this is concept art. So I just need to actually probably got to make the fire cannons a little bit bigger, maybe, or or maybe just, I don't know, we can make the engine a little bit smaller. Like I said, this is all just concept art. So I can, when I do more of the official architectural, I don't know what I want to, what's the, what's the proper terminology of someone who designs a naval vessel? What are they called, I wonder? That's a good question. So when I do more of the blueprints, per se, of the hall design of this, that's when I'll worry about exact sizing. Right now, I can still concept art phase. All right, so this is gonna be like the, or the engine would be, and what I think I'm gonna do is make the engine actually come up into the wing. So the size, well, no, the size of the engine has to come out to right here. Because like I said, here's the little thruster vents. So the size of the engine has to come out to here, and then maybe right here in this part of the engine, it'll kind of slope up into the wing. So what you'll probably see then is a some kind of just mostly flat piece here from this angle where the, the cylindrical part will be more or less hidden from your the front view. All right, so we got that sorted out. We've got some, we got a couple lines here for the wings, the wing pieces. I think what I might do, hmm. You know what I might do? So I said like, here's this piece, here's the first wing piece. You know what I might do is give the wing a little bit of a forward slope to it to kind of look cool. Oh, because this this piece actually so here's this here's this armor band I drew earlier. This actually comes down here, and it kind of because it doesn't actually meet at the edge of the wing, so it actually comes down here and goes across like that. Okay, just talking to myself. I'm looking over some of the details of how that was drawn. I'm like, okay, that actually should be like that. So. Most of the details in the back of the ship are hidden from the front view, so I'm not worrying about that right now. What I think I will do then, so this have a little, still have a little bit of depth to it, I'm going to make this part of the wing here slope down towards the front. And that's, that's what I got these little arrows here for, so I know notice to myself that it's sloping down. So I'm going to take a little bit darker pencil, fill in some of these details, and then, actually one, I can go ahead and move on to the next portion of the ship. 
Let me think a little bit more about this, though. Um, the engines, the main engines in the back, are they visible down here along the bottom? I think they should be. So the, the engines stick out a little bit along the bottom. Not much. Just enough so you can see that they're there. All right, so there we go, like that. So that's the bottom of the flat portion of the hull, wherever that is, and then the engines will stick down a little bit below. Cool, I like it. That looks good, I like that idea. Let me go ahead and get a darker pencil out here and kind of finalize the basic shape of the front view of the Merlin here. Because the Mer I'm actually doing the Merlin. The Merlin is a variation of the Peregrine, which is a redesign of the Sabre. It makes sense, trust me. <laughs> As I mentioned last time, the Merlin and Peregrine are both uh, Falcons. That's where the names come from because of the fact that all the Irrigal warships are named after Apex Predators. All right, let's get this show on the road. It's a little bit darker line. This is the front of the canopy. Here is the start of the wing. The canopy goes out there. It also goes out to... Now, I got, let me think of this a little bit differently. This, this is a little bit different spot because of the fact it made the front slope down. So here is, this line goes to here. This is the near armor band. So that's this thing right here. Oh, and there's little cooling vents I gotta stick in there so I know where those are, one moment. And then there's also, so if that goes like that, and this is sloping down. That, that creates a bit of a conundrum here. Um, which means this also piece also slopes to there. So we have this sloping in two spots. And then you've got the top armor bands, which slope down all the way to that point. All right. So this is so that way. Okay, that, that makes sense in my head. Then, what you're going to see here is the width portion of the wing. And then we can go make that start sloping down inwards. This is sloping down towards the body. I've got the fire cannons jutting out here in front. There's our fire cannon barrels. This is just the, oh, I wasn't going to draw that line, was I? That's all right. It's that slope part. Now the engine, I have decided, was gonna, is going to be hidden in a polygonal shape in this view. So you're not going to be able to tell there's something cylindrical here. You're just seeing the it being, well, let me think here for a minute. I guess this would actually be a, a cylindrical, this would be cylindrical here, actually, now that I think about it. And it would just merge upward into some sort of a polygon or, I don't know, into a flat idea. So whatever, okay. So I, I do need to remember that's actually a cylindrical shape there. I don't have an eraser. Okay. Anyway, regardless, <laughs> I'll remember that when I do the blueprints step of this whole thing. So now the top of the canopy, or the side of the canopy here, goes all the way up to the top of that armor band. This thing here is the side that also goes up to the top of the armor band. And this is a very, very sharp, steep slope down, just because it looks cool. And then we also along here, here's our canopy itself, starts flat, peaks, and then dives back. It goes back in like that. You know, you're just gonna see that kind of disappear in there. This peaks a little bit right here, like that. And then we've got our little multi-step thing going on. Where if each step, it goes up a little bit a little bit higher, that goes there. There's another one in there. And then this is the back. This is this armor band here. There's one more that sits up there. So it's something funny, like it's this weird multi-step armor panel layout like you see in a lot of the Aragul warships. They, you don't know if you can see in the detail there, but there's little armor panels that overlap on top of each other, building up towards a point. You can see it pretty well here on the side of the pale fox, so it can maybe can on camera. But regardless, there's a step armor step up at the top. And then now we've got to stick on some cooling vents here and there. Now the one thing I do need to take in consideration that I did in just a minute ago is that these armor bands are not consistent. There is a bit of a jump here. 
So this is the main armor band. It really does. Okay, I need a ruler. I'll be or I need a razor. I'll be back in one moment. I should have one in the back back here. I have like 15 cliff bars <laughs> in my backpack, but no eraser. Way to go, Jason. That's <laughs> be an idea of the life that I live. Okay. Getting this eraser out of its individually wrapped package for some reason. I don't know why that's necessary, but apparently someone thought it was. So let me go back here and just kind of clean this up a little bit. This is gonna be a bit rounded, I think. And then up here, the front armor panel, this front armor panel here is probably stepped down a little bit. So watch, let me make a few changes to this, these armor layers here. This front one probably steps down a little bit and then finishes that out. And right here, so we have, an, there's a cooling vent right there. And there's also then a cooling vent that does that. Now, same thing with this top one, around the same point, it drops down a little bit and then goes down into that same level there. And there's also a cooling vent that sticks up a little bit higher there. And it looks like somewhere around here, there's also another step down. So what I'm going to do, let me just erase this piece here. We'll make it a little bit taller. So somewhere around here, it steps up again this is, does not have a cooling vent on it, but there's another step up just like that. So there we go. So the top, these armor bands that run down have a little bit of a step to them. And now you're starting to see how that shape plays out there. I'm really liking how that looks. It's looking really cool. Okay. Let's get back down here. There's that. <laughs> Next, I need a sharpener, a pencil sharpener. I don't know where one of those is. I know I have like three of them around here. Okay. That is our engine that's that cooling vents there's one cooling vent there's that cooling vent these others are kind of hidden away and then finally we need to just draw the approximate size of the vector thruster so there's your vector thruster right there and of course there's five of them lined up going towards the back awesome there's our front view of the of the Merlin now Considering all this, let's take a look at the side view. Let me fold my sheet of paper here and start working on figuring out what the ship looks like from the side. So I, can, I can line this up oh, like here. And I wanna use both the front view here and my original top view to figure out what the side's gonna look like. All right, so we know a little bit from our front view. So let's start like this about. Now let me get rid of my sketch here where I was explaining the whole attaching a cylindrical thing via resin to a flat surface. Here would be this. This is going to be the front of the nose cone here. The nose cone itself would peak with the armor band. So here is this first armor band. Armor band ends about there. Second armor band starts here, there. Third one starts here, ends here, wing ends here. So right now I'm just kind of laying out the approximate position of all the important things. Uh, back of warship here, engine ends here. All right, so. There's this, one second now. This was, I'm good with that. That's end back of wing. Okay, there's band, band, band. Okay, so there's my three armor bands. All right, let's start filling in some details. We know that approximately here to here would be, a, that would be about where I want the nose cone to converge to. Height-wise, I can just kind of do some quick measurements here. So we know here's the height, the armor band from that to about here. So I'm just, I've got this extra scrap 
piece of cardboard. And I'm just kind of using that as a very impromptu ruler. It, it does the job, right? So approximately, let's see here, do, do, that's the bottom. So with these big, tall armor bands, the height of the ship's gonna be right around here. So that's about, this is about the tallest point of the ship. So let me just draw that along here. We know that's about the tallest point of the warship, regardless of where it is. The front armor band then ends a little bit lower. I don't know, we'll say around here. And this front armor band is more or less straight on the side. So this, this doesn't have any weird shapes to it. So that's about the front of the ship. Now, so this is the top armor band area up here. The armor band, these side armor bands, they go up and they do this, they slant in. So the side armor band starts here, but it really peaks about here to here. So this is where the top of the armor band is. And the question is, is how far in does this appear on the side of the ship? So, all right. So let me think about the height of the wing. Now the wing, the bottom of the wing starts a little bit above the top of this nose cone here. Let me see. So this is the top of the nose. So the bottom of the wing, if I run it along approximately, this whole concept art is all about just approximate shape and things like that. We'll figure out exacts probably next week, I'm thinking, but we'll see. So that is approximately where the bottom of the wing is. And the, the bottom of the wing, in terms of the wing tips, this is bottom of the wing, wing tips. So let me make some notes here so I know what I'm dealing with. Let's do bottom wing tip is that. And then actual bottom of the wing would actually be below it. So it would be a little bit, it would actually be down here. So this is, this is where the bottom of the wing is. So here's the wing, this top line is the wing tip. This is where the bottom of the wing attaches to the main portion of the hull. So that looks, that's looking pretty good like that. And therefore then, you can kind of think of this area sloping up a little bit. So I'm thinking right here, this line where, which is the dividing line between the armored, the armored bands go straight then go flying off to the side with that Sign of sound effects are required. That would probably be at a height of, you kind of just make it up. So let's say, here's an armor band. I would say, let's, it'd be pretty high up actually, if you think about it. Um, Cause they're, they're about the width of the engine, right? So with the engine would be right here. We can extend that from there. So there to about there. All right, so this line, so if we go from top of whatever like that to there, this here, from the side view, this is our wing tip here, this is what the armor band looks like. It does this, and it's right here at this point, approximately, is where it shoots up along the side, like that something like that and then here is the first of the heat sinks there and same thing over here we'll make it we'll make this whole thing be about the same size so they're here here's where the wing the armor band goes straight and then this one what actually this one dives in a lot faster so it goes there to about there so here's the second armor bands. The armor bands definitely go in sideways pretty darn fast. That's fine. That's that looks cool, I guess. <laughs> this is it's funny when I ran into this problem years ago when I was initially designing the Caladagia warships and then eventually I converted them to 3D miniatures. Because when I first designed them, I wasn't thinking about miniatures. I wasn't planning to make a miniature line soon as when I actually did back then, the initial miniatures of Legends of Caladagia came out like three months after the game was released. Game was released in August 2010. Caladagia miniatures were available for sale in November, I think. So I wasn't planning to have them out that fast. I just decided to, I, I 
It was around that time I discovered Shapeways and really realized how accessible ma manufactured miniatures was to an independent company. Um, so initially, with the initial batch of Caladagia warships, I only designed them from the top down. I didn't think about what they looked like from the side until they got in 3D. And, you, you, and once you take a 2D ship and start translating it into 3D, it looks weird because you don't imagine it to look like that. And you, so that's why it's important what I'm doing now is that you're thinking about it from the beginning that, okay, this is actually what the ship would look like in 3D. And you're not really surprised by how it looks. You don't think, think well, I don't really like how that looks now when you actually get the 3D component going. All right, so anyway, random side start. Armor band, armor band. We know that we need to find this thing here. There's a little bit of a jump up there from that point. So let's go down a little bit here to here. Really? Yeah, that's about that done, right? That, that's right. It's just, it looks, it's odd. So that's like that. So right here would be a bit of a jump up for the armor panel. So they'd actually kind of jump up a little bit and then they'd carry on their way to where they're supposed to go. So there's a little bit of a straight piece right here. All right, so let's think about this, the front armor band, same thing, it's like this. Um, now, this is, this is, it's kind of weird here to think about because this goes there this one goes here this little shape is a, is funny right here that's what I'm kind of I'm considering how it, it, it kind of flattens out for a little bit so this well this thing here is the bottom of the wing tip which means the top of the wing tip is actually up here a little bit so this here is actually where the top of the wing tip is Which means this piece, this first band comes here and it sits flat. Okay, it just you can't, you won't, you really don't notice it from this angle. That weird kind of double finishing thing with Jiggy, but that just I don't know. That makes any sense. It doesn't make any sense, does it? But then this ends right there when there would be a so there's a jump up somewhere here. So let's see about where that first jump up is. We go from, let's go from the, from the bottom of the wing tip until here. So bottom of the wing tip until there is the jump up. So right here, there's a, there's a noticeable jump up. All right, and then there's the heat sink right here. So there's a heat sink. One of the silver heat sinks that sit right there. So we got heat sink, heat sink, heat sink, and then there's going to be heat sink up here. Now, let me think about this for a minute. The wing. So let me line up the top. So the reason I'm keep lining up the this this drawing in other areas is you can see that I'm, I'm trying to approximately line up the front of the ship here. So I'm trying to line up the side view approx pretty closely with the top view. And therefore, it gives me a better idea of what the thing is going to look like when it's, everything's all said and done with. So the front of the wing is approximately here. So this is the... F and then the front of the wing still still has some thickness to it. But this area here, like I said, was sloping down pretty heavily. And this is going to be raised up a little bit. So you're looking at something like this. So that's like the wing. So this is the front of the wing here. Now let's deal with the fire cannons. Because the fire cannons are all mounted below. I don't, you're, you're going to see them a little bit. Because I know the engine has to stop. So the engine stops here. So this is engine stop. Here. Because there's... I know it stops... Actually, it stops probably around here. Because it stops where the vector thruster vent ends. And then... Here's where the engine piece slopes up into the wing right there. So I would see the fire cannons a little bit along the front here. And I do like how the fire cannons are sloping like that. I do want that look. 
So let me toss that out of the way at the moment. Just, I'm just gonna kind of approximately sketch some things down. So fire cannon one starts there. Fire can so this is fire cannon one or the outside one. Uh, fire cannon two then juts out a little bit. So fire so fire cannon two just kind of nudges out a little bit like that. And we can see that it goes somewhere up here. So uh, these should be the same size as I mentioned before. So even though I don't think I drew them right correctly on the top view, I do know that math says that, and this is FC2, that FC1 equals FC2. And it's very important to note that that's the same size as well as, once again, that is congruent to that is to that, and I'm hoping that slash in geometry means congruent. I think it does, but it's been a number of years with me in geometry. Geometry is awesome. Math in general is awesome. <laughs> People will be like, you're crazy. No, math is awesome. Okay. The fire cannons, so here is the wing itself. Fire cannons go up into the wing. So they go up into the wings. They, they're going up into here. And then the bottom of them is approximately wherever the bottom of the engine is. So I need to figure that part out now. The engine, so let's do engine there, goes like that, hanging off the bottom of the wing. So here, the engine doesn't really hang down that much. <laughs> Let me draw a line here to kind of block in the side of the engine. This is the end of the, yes, this was, if I bring my piece thing back down here, this is the end of the wing. Here's the end of the engine. Okay. So this is our engine right here, from here to here, which means I need to re-angle that a bit. So that's actually like that. Excellent. That's looking pretty good there. I'll toss that guy out of the way. Which means the fire cannons hang down a little bit below the engine. So they actually run nearly the length of the wing. I think we're gonna make the fire cans be. Let's do that. There we go. I'm kind of at this point since I haven't actually seen the length of the fire cannons because from every view I've drawn so far, they're completely hidden. I don't know exactly how far they go back. So this time, let's choose. They're just gonna go back there, and that's it. We're just arbitrarily choosing a position, and that's the way to do it sometimes. Okay. Um, which means fire cans go like that. So these are not part of the miniature at the moment. But they're just, they are my measurement pieces, right? Slash, slash, okay. All right, good, good, good. So that's looking good there. I am thinking, hmm. So then this is our fire cannon. So therefore the fire cannon barrel opening, I think I can, I should be able to mold the fire cannon barrel opening because the entire resin is flowing in this direction. I should be able to do that because of that. But that's something to think about once again, how you mold it. Certain features are easier to mold with the resin flowing in one direction. So you're gonna have the fire cannon barrel. So gonna be, you know, they're gonna be in a tiny inset. It's more about given there's something clear that the person can some a very air indentation that's clear enough the person can paint black to make it look like it's that barrel right you're not going to actually try to cast a barrel no that, that that'd be undercut remember the undercut thing i was talking about that's just a good example like, uh, let's imagine if you were to actually try to cast make the barrel hollow here well what happened is the mold rubber would wrap around on top and bottom of the barrel and if you try to pull this piece out like this this piece of the mold up here would get stuck and get ripped and damaged. Once again, that is, so that's an example of an undercut. But if you just have a little bit of an indentation like that long, the mold rubber is flexible enough that you can pull this, pull it apart and this piece of the mold rubber will pop off. So you can have some amount of undercut. It depends on what type of mold rubber you're using. I don't know why I'm looking at this camera when I'm talking, my microphone's up there. Um, of course, you guys can't see that, but random production, production note for you. That's important to know because depending on what type of mold rubber you're using, different mold rubbers are different flex, uh, flexibility. Like this stuff is incredibly flexible, this Mold Star 16. If I were to get out the Mold Max 60, 
which is the specialized mold rubber that you use for pewter molds, you would see it's a lot less flexible and you can't get away with things quite like that. But, you know, and there's other stuff that's even flexible. The Umo rubber is like crazy flexible, but that stuff's crap. Um, <coughs> the Umo, Umo rubber is the basic rubber that they get you, they give you with smooth cast, smooth, yeah, yeah, yeah. I did at least want to show, I get tongue tied. With the smooth cast line of resin products. The problem with it is it's really designed to be used, the mold's designed to be two or three times and it's done. It's not designed for mass casting. It's designed for doing one-off cheap things very cheaply. And it's very idiot proof too. And this stuff's pretty idiot proof too, but it's um, platinum curing, and regardless, I'm getting off topic. Now, here's something to think about, right? Uh, no, that's, let's see. Let me make sure I got the fire cannon. Oh, oh, okay, good, yeah. I just wanna make sure that, so this part, the wing ends here, and we still got our little nose cone piece. So let's start working with where the actual canopy is so I can start building these armor layers that I, was, I keep talking about. The canopy goes back to here. So right about here is where the canopy more or less ends. So we need to draw a line from there to there. So that is actually what the canopy, basic shape of the canopy is gonna be. Now, here are all these different layers you have to worry about. There's this one here, which kind of goes up like that, and this one goes all the way up to here. So here is a, so what it comes down to is this piece, this particular armor band here, the top is not flat, it's slanted. That's important to note, because that makes this thing like that. You have this little one right here, which goes from right here to here. So it's a very small little one. I think we'll make it, you're, you're, you're talking very tiny detail, which is cool. Tiny detail is good. I might make this a little bit higher. So that way you can see a little bit more of a detail there. And the armor band goes a little bit higher. It's not that big a deal. Probably a little bit more fine detail of what I can get with just drawing large drawings with a pencil. And then on this one here, you have one, you have another one that goes up like this and it ends up, uh, how do I think about this here? So that one, it ends up kind of like, it probably ends up doing something like this. So there's another one right there. And then finally there's one here, which is pretty much in line with the top of the armor bands. There's a the top of the armor bands there. So there's the, all these little armor panels stacked on top of each other here. And then of course we've got the actual canopy which we know from the, just like with the f first edition, it's gonna have a little bit of a, a curved dome to it and does something like that. This is one of the few warships that was actually a visible canopy, because that's the only place to put it. So I talked about before, having a, a bridge of a warship near the outside of a spacecraft is a stupid idea. It has to be done on naval warships because, why does it have to be done on naval warships? It's always just been done. The reason it's always been done like that in naval warships is because having the bridge high up on a navy ship means you can see long distances. Same with cargo vessels, things like that. But those rules don't apply to spacecraft. And honestly, they don't really apply to modern warships either. I, I think you see it on aircraft carriers because you got to watch the flight deck and stuff like that. But you think at some point they would just replace a bunch of cameras. But I don't know. I don't really design modern navy warships. There's probably something there I'm missing. I'm almost certain there is. That'd be cool to get someone on the ship who knows about naval warships. That'd be a cool topic, wouldn't it? I wish I, I don't know, I might have it. Ooh, maybe I could get a former nuclear engineer aboard a certain aircraft carrier on the show. I know one. <laughs> I, mean, I, find to talk about. I, don't, I don't know how much, I have no idea how much of that stuff you can talk about. I don't know how much of that thing is classified and whatnot. I think a, a lot of the basic operations of naval warship are not. Obviously the nuclear reactor, that's probably classified. I'm not gonna give answers about that. But um, that'd, that'd be my guess anyway. A lot of fancy stuff like that about, naval, about the U.S. Navy is classified, I'd imagine. As in most military stuff in the United States. But regardless, um, that's why you can't even get things like how fast the ship travels, stuff like that. Okay, this thing down here. We know the nose cone of the ship extends down to the bottom of the fire cannon barrels down here. So th this thing actually does something like this. 
and that's the bottom. All right, that, that's looking pretty good. I like it. And then we have the engines. All right, let's dive, dive back here. So we have the side engines. So first of all, we need the, th the thrusters. So we have thruster one goes from here to here. So here is the first thruster. And they're just little tiny vents, right? Here's thruster two goes from here to here. They should all be the same size. And I think when it comes time to make the official blueprints of this ship, they're gonna be the same size. Uh, I don't know if I actually, I didn't note that anywhere, but I should. They're all gonna the same height, top and, and bottom wise. Cause the idea is they're just vents to where you can vent the uh, burning fuel from the engines out a little bit different place. And nothing, nothing really fancy. Uh, so from there to about there is a, is a vent. They don't have to necessarily be equally distance spaced across the engine because depending on where the position of the thruster affects exactly how it moves the warship, so we can just say that they designed it this way to give them certain maneuverability patterns. Sure, that actually would be true if you were to sit down and figure out the physics of spacecraft, spacecraft thrusters. I don't like that idea. I think it's legit science. Any kind of legit science is never a bad thing. Just don't let legitimate science get in the way of a good story. There's so much we don't know about spacecraft physics, spacecraft tactics, any of that kind of stuff. So don't ever let that bog things down. But if you can get it right, good. That's cool. All right, so here's the engine that sticks out here. There is still a little bit of the wing. All right, now what I need to do is figure out how the back of the ship here works. I can see up here that this armor band does do something like this. The armor band has a little bit of a backwards kind of, it breaks off and does that. And then we immediately, at some point here, let me figure out about where, we see, <laughs> so this is one of the examples where you imagine how the spacecraft looks in your head and then you realize that's not what you're thinking. So you can see on the back of the spacecraft here, I have this little area that, that I don't know what exactly it does, but we know from here is the top of the warship all the way down to an area that's a little bit above the engines, which at the very least must be somewhere, well I guess we can make the engines, which is something like, I will say up here, so the top of the engines will be right about here. What that means is this area right here, let me see if I'm doing this right, I mean, I, might, I probably don't, oh you know what, I don't have it quite in the right spot, is this thing here, is like that, and then this thing comes down here. Okay, so it's a little bit further back. I had this I had this measured a little bit wrong. What that means is that this thing here, here's the slope, right? This is so the back of this warship drops off really fast. Which isn't a bad thing. It's just that's not that's not how I imagine that would look. But you know what? The only way for it to actually look like that correctly from the top is that it's gotta do this. And it's like, oh yeah. Sure, <laughs> you know, you're like, oh, yeah, 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 okay. Um, well, let me think here. So here's the back of, of this thing. No, it doesn't have to do that. Now that I think about it, no, it doesn't have to drop off that quick. Because this is just a straight down look. What we know is this here, let me think about it. It, has, it actually has to, by the time it gets down here, it's gotta be right above the engines. So it's got to do that. This thing here, I think, will be all right. So this is then this, and then here's our engines. All right. So let's draw in our engines, which we know are visible from below the ship. So we know the engines are, are below the fire cannons. Let's make them huge. So our entire engine will run along like this. So here is the main engines are absolutely freaking huge compared to the size of this ship. But that's the way I want them to be. These things are, these little Corvette ships are just massive amounts of engines. So they can, with enough fuel to last, you know, maybe an hour in combat, of course, a lot less outside of combat. They sit in orbit, don't do anything. You know, sitting in a war, warship is, sitting in a warship is very boring if you think about it. You're just floating around in a circle around a planet again and again, it be an ellipse. Woo, exciting days you float around in an ellipse, or in an ellipse pattern. <laughs> Enjoy the science fiction training. Okay. 
So this is this is the other engine here. This would be so this is still all hall of the craft. The hall of the craft runs along here. So here's the hall of this of the craft. We know that goes down like that. Here's its shape. Fire cannon stop there. So this here is a line, probably more or less. Let me think about it. So here's the nose cone. So you're really thinking this is probably a line here to there. Here's the end of the ship. Um, if you think, look at the, the details I've got here on the hammerhead engines. There are bands, so I think you're going to see that here as well. The engines have these cooling bands to them. They'll probably do something one there. Probably put like three of them along here. And there's to give a little bit of more detail to the engine. Nothing fancy. That's all they're there for is to give a little bit of detail to things. The back of the engine then can have a band around it here too. Give it a little bit more detail. You do got to be careful with the band here. That can be a great area for air bubbles to get trapped and that may end up not actually... I'm trying to think. You just got to be very careful about it. Be very careful about it and you can make it work. But air bubbles can get trapped there really easily. And then here's the back of the engine which of course is going to be a resin fill point and there's a resin vent point. Now the last thing we gotta worry about from the side here, we're getting close to the end of this episode, is this, these little fiddly bits. I'm not even sure what's going on here. I just kinda drew them because they look cool on the top, and now I'm like, I don't know how that'll work. Okay, so let me think about it here. Here's our wing. They're sitting probably in line with the, the wing plane. So this looks, this thing here is labeled two. So this piece here, it's actually doing something like this. Here we are, it's kind of sloping in a little bit. So presumably, I actually don't, I didn't think about how the back of the wing attaches here, attaches to the hull. Because up here I thought about it a little bit, but I didn't think about it back here. i do something like that, I think. I think I'll have to really sort that out from the back view. That's one of those things why I do it from all the different views. You can, you can start solving problems like architectural concepts of how things actually fit together. So like this piece here probably goes down to wherever the wing attaches to it. So this piece right here, that's this thing you see here. Um, this will probably extend out. So what I think you're gonna see, this will go like this, this will go like this, and that goes to there, and this is all engine. I think what's going to happen is the hull is going to kind of curve up a little bit. So the hull starts here, and somewhere in here, which doesn't really matter where, probably the back of the fire cannons, is going to go up to where it aligns with the bottom of the engine. And therefore, this area here, this, is all engine, 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 and it'll just be engine colored. And this will be hall here. And then we've got these little cooling vent things, which somewhere, they, they start somewhere in here. Let me see here. First one finishes right there, second one finishes right there. And they kind of go back up into different parts here, so that goes there. And then we have another one. Go goes down like that. All right, I think that covers the basic shape of the side. Let me go ahead and just kind of fill in all the detail, or blacken in all the details so we can see what we're dealing with here. As best I can, this can go up here. That slopes up like that. Here are these little armor panels I keep talking about in the front. One, they keep going up, up, and up. That goes up like that. There's a cooling vent right here. Here's our armor band. Coming down, bottom of this armor band step, top of the armor band step, cooling vent, armor band step, armor band step. Zoop, 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 zoop. <laughs> It'd probably, this would be a little bit lower right here, I think, because I'm going to do that. That's getting annoying, isn't it? I'll stop that. Okay. <laughs> stop screwing around there. Okay. That's good. So now I'm just. Going back in and blocking in all the details so I can clearly tell what is what. This is the side of the of 
Yep, so this is the side of the wing right here. It's going to run along there like that. Those are those cooling vents. Cooling things like that. Here we go. So that is engine. That is haul, haul. Here's this engine. That runs along here like that. To do something like that. Here are our vector thrusters, which are clearly all mangled from this perspective, but that's fine. Fire cannon vents. Here is this thing. Canopy. Check. Good. Check, check, check. Okay. This was the bottom of the fire cannons. Here's the bottom of the engines. We have a couple engine bands there and then there. And we have one that wraps around it from this view. And then there's the back of the engines. All right. That's the side view of the Peregrine as it currently stands. I like it. So today... You were just about done. Unfortunately, I didn't get all the different sides done, but I've got a good shot here of the front, the side, and now the top, which leaves the back view and the bottom view still to be done. I'm going to go ahead and do those this week. Don't need to do them live on camera. I've already done two hours of concept artwork and me rambling. So I'm thinking next week I'll get all that done for next week. And then we'll put this stuff all on the computer and start doing kind of the final blueprints of the ship, which will then be used as the basis to build a 3D model for the thing. So we're going to move beyond the concept art phase into getting the exact specifications, the exact size of the miniature done. And that should put us in a really good spot to quickly build a 3D model and get a very good idea of what this thing is going to look like before I load it up in Blender and start screwing things around. And I probably should have the other camera up while I'm talking like that. Why don't I? <laughs> So, there we go. That was the whole plan I'm going to be doing this time around. So with that out of the way, once again, I'm Jason, the creator of the Caladagia universe. To learn more about Legends of Caladagia, Caladagia Fleet Commander, and of course view the entire miniatures range, including the Aragul Hammerhead, the Pale Fox slash Main Wolf Destroyer, and of course, soon to be this guy. He's not up for sale yet, but the, soon the Lynx Battlecruiser the new version of the Lynx Battlecruiser, I should say. The old version is up there right now. And the new version is actually an upgrade kit for the old version. So if you happen to buy the new old version between now and whenever this comes out, you can buy the extra pieces separately. So you're not going to be somehow weirdly screwed over <laughs> in a very odd, odd way. I don't want to do that. So anyway, with that all out of the way, once again, I'm Jason. I don't need to say that two times in three minutes. All right, so next week we'll dive into the final architectural plans of the Aragold Peregrine. Thank you for watching, and have a good night.